The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulled tautly over its bones. With its bones pushing out against its skin, its complexion the ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disentered from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody. Its body was unclean from suffering, from superations of flesh, giving off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. Basil Johnston, Ojibwe teacher and scholar, Ontario, Canada. The Algonquin legend describes the creature as, quote, a giant with a heart of ice. Sometimes it is thought to be entirely made of ice. Its body is skeletal and deformed, with missing lips and toes, end quote. The Ojibwe describe it as, quote, it was a large creature, as tall as a tree, with a lipless mouth and jagged teeth. Its breath was a strange hiss, its footprints full of blood, and it ate any man, woman, or child who ventured into its territory. And those were the lucky ones. Sometimes the Wendigo chose to possess a person instead, and then the luckless individual became a Wendigo himself, hunting down those he had once loved and feasting upon their flesh. End quote. Native American versions of the creature spoke of a gigantic spirit over 15 feet tall that had once been human but had been transformed into a creature by the use of magic. Though all of the descriptions of the creature vary slightly, the Wendigo is generally said to have glowing eyes, yellow fangs, terrible claws, and overly long tongues. Sometimes they are described as having sallow, yellowish skin, and other times depicted to be covered with matted hair. The creature is said to have a number of skills and powers, including stealth, is a near-perfect hunter, knows and uses every inch of its territory, and can control the weather through the use of dark magic. They are also portrayed as simultaneously gluttonous and emaciated from starvation. Wendigos are said to be cursed to wander the land, eternally seeking to fulfill their ferocious appetite for human flesh and if there is nothing left to eat, it starves to death. The legend lends its name to the disputed medical term Wendigo psychosis, which is considered by some psychiatrists to be a syndrome that creates an intense craving for human flesh and fear of becoming a cannibal. Ironically, this psychosis is said to occur within people living around the Great Lakes of Canada and the United States. Wendigo psychosis usually develops in the winter in individuals who are isolated by heavy snow for long periods. The initial symptoms are poor appetite, nausea, and vomiting. Subsequently, the individual develops a delusion of being transformed into a Wendigo monster. People who have had Wendigo psychosis increasingly see others around them as being edible. At the same time, they have an exaggerated fear of becoming cannibals. The most common response when a person showed signs of Wendigo psychosis was a curing attempt by traditional native healers. In cases of the past, if these attempts failed, and if the possessed person began either to threaten those around them or act violently or antisocially, they were executed. There have been reports regarding this psychosis dating back hundreds of years. A 1661 Jesuit relations document stated, What caused us greater concern was the intelligence that met us upon the lake, namely that the men deputed by the conductor for the purpose of summoning the nations to the North Sea and assigning them a rendezvous where they were to await our coming had met their death the previous winter in a very strange manner. Those poor men, according to the report given us, were seized with an ailment unknown to us, but not very unusual among the people we were seeking. 
They are afflicted with neither lunacy, hypochondria, nor frenzy, but have a combination of all these species of disease, which affect their imagination and cause them a more than canine hunger. This makes them so ravenous for human flesh that they pounce upon women, children, and even upon men, like veritable werewolves, and devour them ferociously without being able to appease or glut their appetite. Ever seeking fresh prey, and the more greedily, the more they eat. This ailment attacked our deputies, and as death is the sole remedy among those simple people for checking such acts of murder, they were slain in order to stay the course of their madness." End quote. Another documented case occurred in 1878 when a Plains Cree trapper from Alberta named Swift Runner suffered one of the worst cases known. Swift Runner was a trader with the Hudson Bay Company who was married and the father of six children. In 1875, he served as a guide for the Northwest Mounted Police. During the winter of 1878 to 1879, Swift Runner and his family were starving along with numerous other Cree families. His eldest son was the first to die of starvation, and at some point, Swift Runner succumbed to Wendigo psychosis. Though emergency food supplies were available at Hudson Bay Company Post some 25 miles away, he did not attempt to travel there. Rather, he killed the remaining members of his family and consumed them. He eventually confessed and was executed by authorities. A Wendigo allegedly made a number of appearances near a town in northern Minnesota from the late 1800s through the 1920s. Each time that it was reported, an unexpected death followed and finally it was seen no more. Another well-known case involving Wendigo psychosis was that of Jack Fiddler, an OG Cree and medicine man known for his powers at defeating Wendigos. Fiddler claimed to have defeated 14 Wendigos during his lifetime. Some of these creatures were said to have been sent by enemy shamans and others were members of his own band who had been taken with the insatiable, incurable desire to eat human flesh. In the later case, Fiddler was usually asked by a family member to kill a very sick loved one before they turned Wendigo. Fiddler's own brother, Peter Flett, was killed after turning Wendigo when the food ran out on a trading expedition. Hudson Bay Company traders the Cree and missionaries were all well aware of the Wendigo legend, though they often explained it as mental illness or superstition. Regardless, several incidents of people turning Wendigo and eating human flesh are documented in the records of the company. In 1907, Fiddler and his brother Joseph were arrested by the Canadian authorities for murder. Jack committed suicide, but Joseph was tried and sentenced to life in prison. He ultimately was granted a pardon, but died three days later in jail before receiving the news of this pardon. The frequency of Wendigo psychosis cases decreased sharply in the 20th century as the Native Americans came into greater and greater contact with Western ideologies. However, Wendigo creature sightings are still reported, especially in northern Ontario, near the cave of the Wendigo, and around the town of Kenora, where it has allegedly been spotted by traders, trackers, and trappers for decades. There are many who still believe that the Wendigo roams the woods and the prairies of northern Minnesota and Canada. Kenora, Ontario, Canada have been given the title of Wendigo Capital of the World by many. Sightings of the creature in the area have continued well into the new millennium. Most recently, in 2019, mysterious howls in the Canadian wilderness led some to question whether they were caused by the infamous man-beast. One hiker who was present said, quote, I've heard many different animals in the wild, but nothing like this, end quote.
The Wendigo may be a creature of legend, but it has survived through the years as a terrifying reminder to hold on to our humanity and not let the darkness consume us. That's all for today's episode of Shadows in History. I'm your host, Tiffany Taylor. Please be sure to follow and subscribe for all new episode updates. Thank you.